Hello, welcome to this AIX in focus video. This time we're looking at the AIX open source toolbox. My name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in power systems, advanced technology support in Europe. Little quick note in here, though I call it the AIX open source toolbox or just AIX toolbox. Sometimes it's referred to and it appears on some of the web pages, the AIX toolbox for Linux applications, all exactly the same thing. In this series, we're assuming that you know the basic Unix, AIX or Linux commands. So let's call this the AIX toolbox, regardless of whether it has open source or Linux applications in the title. Now IBM is making these popular open source tools, particularly in applications, available for AIX users. The benefits are that this is from a trusted source, so you know who's compiling it up. You can trust IBM maybe more than some random website on the internet. It's one place to look for lots of applications and tools. The last time I looked, there's about 800 or more different packages in RPM format that we can download. We also have yum for AIX and that sorts out all those ghastly prerequisites from hell that you can get into when you're trying to download one package and it needs another 20 and then those need another 20 on top of that. It will just pull them all down for you just like yum operates on Red Hat. And here's an example of some of my favorites down in here. Uh, some of these I use every day, VNC, Vim, WGET, and uh, yum, uh, some of them uh, rarely, some of them I just set up and run, like the uh, Apache HTTPD. Uh, Bash is actually not a good example because Bash and the corn shell that comes with AIX have a common ancestor, so they're pretty much the same thing. You're more likely to have problems moving Bash scripts to AIX with things like the sort command and the grep command have slightly different options. Of course, on AIX, it is the POSIX standard version of the at t code that we're running, so maybe it's the Linux that you have got that slightly wrong, but I don't want to start a flame war. So where are the web pages for the AIX toolbox? Well, we have an overview page, IBM support pages, and a great big long thing in here. There's the alphabetical list of tools and applications, the same sort of thing, AIX toolbox, Linux applications, downloads, and an alpha at the end, or this is the, the part number for the actual web page. Well, it's better than the old developer works when we had enough hexadecimal digits in there that we could actually put a web page on every molecule in the known universe, but it's still an awful lot. And who's going to remember how to, to type in all that and get that right? Well, I've created an IBM.biz AIX toolbox. Now, unfortunately, they made this case sensitive. So it's AIX, spelled as you should do, lowercase toolbox and that gets you to one of these links and all the others are a tab away so let's go and have a look at that now https ibm.biz ironically the b is for business and i think that's what the biz means as well slash aux toolbox and you can see we've been put into the downloads alphabetical so this is where i go to find out what's new what's going on just want to draw your attention to some other things in here. If we look at the overview, well, we have some overview information about what's going on, some examples of what you can download down in here. If we scroll down, some hints and tips about downloading things. We can actually get to the FTP server behind the website and download things from there directly if we wanted to. We have in here, of course, the licensing and installation instructions. If we go to here, license, guess what that has? That's right, there's the licensing information. Now, of course, a lot of these software tools in our toolbox are open source licenses, so we have to obey those sorts of things. These are provided as is. These are the two most important words up in here. So you're welcome to download these and use them and go live with them and do whatever you want with them, but we're not going to do AIX level support for these tools because you're not paying IBM to do that. And to a large extent, it's not IBM's fault if there's something wrong with the open source package itself. We're not going to go and fix the open source packages because of errors and complaints by people using this software. If you think there's something wrong with the way the package actually operates or problems with it, you can actually go to the open source development team and, and suggest that they fix their code as well. 
So if we go back to our download page here, I'll just page down a couple of them here. That's just the A's. And down here, here's the B's and the C's and the whatever, all the way down to the bottom. Also in this page, there's a link in here to frequently ask questions. We're going to read that in case you've got the question that's on their list there. And we've got a link here to some hints and tips about resolving the RPM packages and the interlinking of them. We're going to be using yum, I highly recommend that, so we don't have that problem. Also over in here is the open source forum. Just by before we go away from this page, we've got the downloads by date in here. This is good if you want to find out, well, what have they updated in the past month since I've been here? If we click on this one, this open source forum. We go here. Loads of information for the power community at this website for open source sort of things. We could look down to these posts and see if you've got an article that you want to read in there. The reason I bring you in here is if you want to raise a question, then you go into this discussion here. So here we can ask questions about the packages. You can't ask them, how do I set up Apache server? <laughs> because you can go look at that up on the website. And if you've got a problem with your config file, well, you will have to resolve that to yourself. But if you have particular questions in here about perhaps the way they compiled it or something like that, then you can put them in here. If you have an open source package that you want included on the list, or least considered, again, you can put that in here and it'll go on their list. They may come back and say there's something wrong with the licensing of this program so we can't support it, or that it's on their list and we hope to have that in the next month or two. They're quite uh, proactive in here. You can actually see some of the, the developers that are doing a lot of the work in here. And you can see these guys have re you know, replied multiple times with some uh, problems that they're looking at on this list already. So you want access to the AX open source toolbox. Well, start with a nice clean copy of AX. Down and install the latest version of AX 7.2. I guess you could use 7.1. I haven't tried it. I don't download old versions of AIX. Then you install something called the Yum Bundle. This is very easy to do. We'll come to that in a minute. And then you can use the yum command to install all of those hundreds of RPM packages, whatever takes your fancy. You can just download and install it. And yum will sort out all those prerequisites from hell issues for you and download anything else you need to get what you're trying to install. Little word of warning in here, of course, 7.2 is the current version of AX right now when I'm making this video in August 2020. If you're looking at this video later on, then make sure it's the current release of AX, both the technology level and the service pack. Don't make life difficult for yourself. But I can hear you all saying, but I'm running older copies of AX, what am I going to do? The answer is upgrade to the latest copy of AX 7.2. Install the yum bundle and then you can use the yum command to install every package you want. Then I can hear people saying, hang on, I can't upgrade. I'm stuck on this particular release or some of my applications demand that. OK, when you run the OS level minus S command, you look at those last four digits. That's the year and the week number. So in this case, the 20 means 2020. And the 28 means week 28, so it's you know, roughly speaking halfway through the year. If the year is 19 or 20 or later, you're probably okay. If it's earlier than 2018, upgrade your AIX. Now, why do I keep going on about upgrading your AIX? Well, that's a good idea anyway. The problem being is that there were repository prerequisites and co-requisites and library updates that were all a bit confused before 2019. If you get to that level, then you should have a really sweet deal with using the toolbox. Earlier than that, well, good luck. Now you may also have a copy of AIX that's a little bit old, but it's also broken in the, in the sense that the RPM packages. I have one of these that I've had for many, you know, a decade, and I've got into problems where the RPM erase command won't delete some packages and the RPM install fails to install things because there's some problem with the library mismatches and I'm sort of stuck. Well, 
could happen for a whole bunch of reasons. Probably you've been taking RPMs from different repositories. Perhaps you've been forced installing them. Uh, that, that can break some of the prerequisites. May get you past the initial problem, but you're creating a problem in the future. Or, like me, I was copying commands of other copies of AI. So I just needed to get this thing done today. So you're stuck in that case. So what do you do in that case getting out of this problem? Fortunately, I've been there and done a lot of work to work out how to get you out of this. So if you go to the AI Expert blog, there's an article in there, AX with older open source RPM packages clean up and then use YUM. This involves upgrading AIX, erasing all your current RPM packages, fixing issues and mistakes. Then you can add the YUM bundle and reinstall your favorite RPMs and reconfigure them. For me, one of the ones I had to reconfigure was Apache because it came from Apache 2.2 to 2.4 and the config files and the the modules had changed, so I had to work out that. But that was probably a good thing, upgrading my Apache. I should have done that perhaps two years earlier, but I couldn't get the new one to install until now. Now, if you got access to the internet repository, uh, or going via a proxy, excellent. You need to go to the install in the um, bundle. If you haven't, don't have internet access, you need to download the AX Toolbox repository, then use a local internal repository. There's an article here in developer.ibm.com that covers how to do this. You're going to download and use two little commands called repo sync and create repo commands. You'll set up an Apache server to serve out the files in the repository, and then a little update to your yum config file to point to the local repository instead of the internet one. There's also another useful place to go. I'm not sure how to pronounce this person's name. djukestext.net, perhaps. Uh, excellent person. He does a lot of good technical stuff in here. He's also got an AIX YUM installation article, but it actually includes making a local repository. So there's some hints and tips, and if you got stuck, you maybe find some answers there. This guy's a really good person because uh, he uses InfluxDB like me for performance data, uh, taking N more data and putting it into Influx, also getting the data from the HMC. Uh, but I recommend my own tool, of course, NJMon, that does a similar sort of operation. Right, let's now look at the YUM bundle and how to get that installed. And, oh, there's another AI expert blog that will cover how to do this. I'll actually demonstrate that now as that's a long article and I haven't actually made a video about how to do this. Here's my brand new copy of AX72 TL4 SP2. I create this thing with a little command called figlet. It's only available on Linux. But anyway, I copied the yum bundle version 5 tar file to slash temp slash yum. And I did a quick RPM minus QA. So these are the only packages we got installed. These are the default installed when you get AX72 installed. Right, so we'll now extract, uh, undo the tar file, extract the F star tar. Here are the files. Oh, by the way, it's uh, 50 something megabytes in size. We'll clear the screen. We can see them all here. And we'll install those now with RPM. Okay, bit of a shock horror. Couldn't do anything. The slash opt file system is too small. So this is there, so we can fix that. and run that again. Now at the end of 2020, Python 2.7 is being deprecated as it no longer supported and uh, the yum tool will have to move on to use Python 3. Point something. Up in here, normally you get errors thrown, don't we, when we, we see things like this. But this is perfectly okay. This is just an information line that it's putting some these library objects into this particular archive, which is perfectly okay. If we clear that, we 
we get a whole bunch of packages. The next thing we should do is, I don't know if you noticed that the Yum Bundle package came out in 2019, so it might be a little bit old. So it's worth doing something like this, a Yum update. As the very first thing you do, this is finding the uh, Xtools repository, and wow, there's quite a few things there that it wants. 23 installed and 16 upgraded, 145 megabytes of download. Is this okay? Yes. Now, I'll probably cut some of this out of the video because it's going to spend a few minutes doing this. Okay, and we complete. If we clear that. M minus QA, a whole load of things, but the world is a roaster now. We clear that and we do yum list, it will list all the things in the repository. Wow, that was quick. Um, okay, probably a slicker way of doing this, but if we just do a count the number of lines, 813 packages are available to us. Absolutely great. So let's just install those. Great. Finish off with a quick reminder then, we have the shortcuts to IBM Biz AIX Toolbox. There's the overview, the licenses, the packages by name or by date, frequently asked questions, the forum if you want to ask uh, questions or request new packages they'll see what they can do but they do like feedback when you want the yum bundle this is the great big url to go and find it and my expert blog has a couple of yum articles that i've used and referred to in this video then the whole of the ax toolbox is available to you to download and use in seconds well that's it for this ax in focus video on the AX open source toolbox. Hope you found that interesting and useful. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something or enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and even click the button for alerts so you're told when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for your time.